All right, what's on the bench today? It's a trombone. Uh, raise your hand if anybody played in the band and played trombone. Uh, this is a radio frequency trombone, but it works exactly the same way as a real trombone. It has a, a pipe that goes this direction and it makes a U and it comes back this direction. And you can slide it out and you can slide it in and that changes the length of the tube. And that changes the note that you play on a trombone, the length of resonance. And uh, so what we're doing here is we're actually just changing the length of the coax. We, it acts like a coax, it's coax inside. But we can magically make the coax this long, or this long, or this long, just by sliding it. Now, it always gets multiplied by two when you slide it, okay? If you slide it an inch, it's actually changing the length of the uh, coax by two inches. Um, but, uh, yes, it is a trombone. Um, and it's uh, pretty long, okay? So it's about th three, uh, about two feet, two feet long, maybe? Just about two feet long. And um, it has, uh, on this end, it's got two end connectors, and then it's just got coaxes. This is just a, a spacer. It doesn't do anything electrically. And uh, these are collets that allow it to slide in and out, and you can tighten them if you want to uh, fix it on some particular length. And then this little block here is just a go-between. But the uh, part number here is on the... Uh, is on, on this, I think you can read that. Constant impedance trombone line type uh, 874-LTL84, or is that an S4? I think that's an S4, <clears throat> let's see. Yep, 874-LTLS4, uh, General Radio Company, uh, Concord, Massachusetts, USA. Um, and uh, the uh, connections are marked general radio as well. It's all using all general radio parts for the end connectors and stuff, but it is a trombone. Well, what is a trombone? Well, it just slides in and out, like I said. Um, so it was a pretty standard piece of test equipment. Um, you may have used one in school. Probably haven't used one at home. Uh, they're quite expensive. Uh, I spent a whopping five dollars for this one. <laughs> so yeah, um, it is pretty cool. So I think what we should do is put it on a vector network analyzer and take a look at something that you might care about changing the electrical length or changing the delay. Call it different things, but you're just uh, creating uh, a different electrical length or a different physical length uh, of the transmission line. But the actual characteristics of the transmission line never changes. It's just 50 ohms, okay? All right, let's put this thing on the uh, VNA. Uh, so it goes over there and it goes over there and it goes over there and it goes up to the VNA, okay? So um, on this end of the trombone, I'm gonna be putting a load, okay, a 50 ohm load. On this end of the uh, trombone, I'm going to bring it into the VNA. Now I've calibrated it um, already. Um, I've calibrated it at this port, okay? So including this transmission line, I've put my plane of reference right here at the, at the output connector of the trombone, okay? And so let's take a look at what we got here. And we have a nice spot right in the center. You probably can't even see it, but there's a spot right there at 50 ohms. And uh, we are looking right at uh, a CW frequency of 950 megahertz, okay? So we have a single frequency, and we're looking at that, and I've calibrated it at that one spot, <clears throat> okay? Now, I'm going to be using a homemade device. This one right here, it is a 100 ohm load, okay? I've taken an SMA connector and I've soldered a 100 ohm resistor across it. And now we'll have a 100 ohm load. Where do you think 100 ohms plots on a Smith chart? It plots right there at 100. Um, and so, you know, it's 10, 25, 50, 100, 250, infinity. So our spot is now right there at 100 ohms. All right. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move the trombone. We're going to slide the trombone in and out. What does that do? Well, it adds electrical length. Um, and that electrical length 
creates a phase shift, right? Normally, the waves go and they bounce through the trombone and they bounce back. And I have it set up so that they're, this, is, this is where it's calibrated, okay? As you change the electrical length in the Smith chart, you'll get a rotation, okay? You'll get a rotation. At a quarter wave of added electrical length, you'll rotate 180 degrees on the Smith chart. And with um, uh, 180 degrees of phase change, you will rotate 360 degrees on the Smith chart, okay? You go from infinity to infinity, or you go from zero to zero, you're always adding a half wavelength. If you go halfway, you're always adding a quarter wavelength, okay? All right, so let me slide the trombone and we will watch that little spot move. Oh, there we go, see it move down? And now it's down there. Okay, let me move it back to where we started out. Okay, now I'm gonna shorten the trombone. If I shorten the trombone, it goes that direction, okay? All right. Um, what if I move the trombone so that I've changed the electrical length by one quarter of a wavelength at 950 megahertz. I'll go all the way over to the other side. Now it looks like a 25 ohm resistor, okay? So we've changed a 100 ohm resistor to a 25 ohm resistor just by adding coax. <laughs> um, and uh, if you haven't noticed, it's traveling on an arc. Well, what shape is that arc? Let me go to a, a polar plot on the uh, Smith chart here. And now I have concentric circles and we're about 1.7 uh, divisions that away. Okay, and then let me move it. Let me move it. Let me move it. Let me move it. You, you see that it's traveling in exactly a circle. Okay, adding elect electrical length rotates the Smith chart. And so we are just adding electrical length, and we have a, a, uh, a circle. Now, I've talked before that on a Smith chart, um, I did a quite detailed video on the mathematics of Smith charts and everything, but if you plot VSWR on a Smith chart, it's constant circles, it's bullseye circles on a Smith chart, and that's because all it is is a rotation. And uh, so there you go. Uh, this 100 ohm resistor is going to be a VSWR of 2 to 1. Okay? So we have 100 divided by 50 is 2. 50 divided by 25 is 2. Uh, yeah, so these are Visver, Visver curves of 2 to 1 Visver. Isn't that cool? Uh, let's see if we can complicate things a bit here. Let's go ahead and sweep from, let's say we're going to sweep from 900 megahertz. Oops, that's CW frequency. Uh, start, we'll start at 700 megahertz, 7015, and we're going to stop at one gigahertz. Okay. And it's also plotting a circle. Why is that? Well, that's because we're using different frequencies and different frequencies travel different distances for every cycle, right? Cycles per second. And so a quarter wave is a different size in, in these different wavelengths. And so it also travels in a constant circle or close enough um, if we're changing the uh, changing the frequency now there's some other things that go on and it changes a little bit but basically uh, when you see a circle like this it's a constant visor and um, it doesn't really matter so let's shorten it up a bit here let's see frequency Let's do a start of 900 megahertz. We'll go from 900 to even better. Let's go, let's do a start at 950, oops, at 950 megahertz. 
There we go. Let's get part of the circle. So we're going from 950 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. And there we get our little thing. Now when we change the trombone, okay, we still get a rotation on the Smith chart centered around 50. It's still rotating around. If I go to polar plot, you'll be able to see it better. It is just traveling around and around and around. All we're doing is changing the phase. And that's what trombones are good for, um, modifying the phase of a system um, and helping you out with a measurement. All right, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the trombone.